In this lesson, I'm going to do a demonstration for you on using clipping masks in Illustrator. Now, if you've ever wanted to crop artwork or photographs in Illustrator, clipping masks are a great way to do that, um, and they keep things very editable. So, I'm going to show you how to do this using the element that we created back in Module 2. This is the photo frame. And I'm going to go about ungrouping this, and then we're going to use this gray shape here, this rectangle, as our masking shape for a photograph. All right, so to begin, what I need to do first is uh, ungroup so that I can get to that shape there. So I have this group here, and I'm going to go Command or Control Shift U to ungroup, and let's see what we have now. Okay, I still have another group. Uh, okay, so now I'm just checking here. All of this type here is outline type, and so I don't want to ungroup it because then I'll just have a bunch of letters. So those are still in a group, and that's good. That's what I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this a few more times. Okay, there we go. So we've got it. Now I can select just this gray square. And while we're at it, actually, I'm going to go ahead and twirl down layer one here so we can see all the objects on the layer. So I've got my type, my line, and now here's my gray rectangle masking shape that's uh, uh, now no longer part of a group, the white shape, and the background shape. Great. Okay, so now that I have access to this shape that we're going to use as a masking shape, um, I'm going to go hop over to Photoshop and bring in a photograph. And I have this photograph already here, and I'm just going to click on it and drag it into my Illustrator window. And what that does is it embeds this image in the file. So my file size will increase by the size of this photograph here, and this photograph will now, uh, from here on, travel with this file. Now, I talk a lot more about using images in your files in Illustrator in my class Illustrator 2, and we talk more about clipping masks there as well. But this is just kind of a quick, quick little demonstration for you. All right, so I have my photograph now also on layer one, and it's at the very top of the stack. Well, the main thing about using, uh, working with clipping masks is that you need to have your masking shape on top of the photograph. So that's why I've twirled down here, because what I can do is very easily just find that gray rectangle here in the layers panel and drag it on top of the photograph. And of course, another way to do this is to use the object arrange shortcuts um, as well. So you can do that either way. Um, and so now the end result is that I have my photograph with my gray rectangle on top of it. And then I'm going to select both of them, holding down shift. I've got the rectangle and now I've got the photograph. And then I'll go up to the object menu and pull down to clipping mask and make. And there it is. It's pretty simple. Um, to undo that, well, I could always hit undo, but to release a clipping mask, I go back to the same object, clipping mask, and release. So that's the basics of working with clipping masks. Now, let me go ahead and I'm going to undo because I want that mask back, and then I'm going to show you a quick way uh, to edit and move this around. Now, there are, there's more than one way to do this, and we talk about this in my Illustrator 2 class, but since I'm moving sort of quickly here, um, I'm just going to show you sort of the, the quick on the fly way of doing this. So right now I have, and I'm hovering actually here, and you can see the outline. I have my smart guides on. So you can see the outline of the original photograph as I hover over this. When I select my clipping mask now, this is a group. I can see that up in the upper left corner here in the control bar. So this moves together, and these things are are now together. Let me undo that and move it back into place. And what happens when you make a clipping mask is that gray shape that was there, well it's still there masking the, the, uh, the photograph, but it turned into a no fill, no stroke, invisible rectangle now. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to just take a look at editing this. So I'm going to deselect and then I'm going to switch to my white arrow and you know, the white arrow is the tool that you use to get inside groups, along with getting at the anchor points. But in this case, because we have a group, because making a clipping mask creates a group, 
between the shape and the original photograph here, I can use this white arrow to get inside the group. So as I hover, you see the outlines of the photograph boundaries there. If I click on this, then I can just move this photograph around inside the clipping mask. So use the white arrow to do that. Now, if I want to enlarge and reduce it, I need to switch back to the black arrow. So I'm going to hit V to do that. And now I see these bounding box handles here. So I can just do the usual old bounding box transformations, even rotate it, that kind of thing. So let me undo that and squeeze this up a little bit so I can fit as many cupcakes as possible in this, in this little window here. All right, so that is working with clipping masks.